Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on brushes, and this will be like part one of a paint tool side walkthrough I want to do. So let's get started. Okay, first I'm going to move this brush, and the way you do that is you right click it, and then just drag it down to where you want to move it. And there you go. And I have a blank spot. So first I'm going to make a brush, and most of the time I just use brush tool for everything. Like I don't even use all these other ones. Well, I use the eraser, of course, but I don't usually make brushes specifically for these other ones because, I don't know, I'm just lazy like that, I guess. But, um, first, you start out, I'll start out with the base, basic brush, and the way you rename it is you just double click it and then you name it what you want. I will name it, uh, paint because I guess that's what I'll be doing with it. So, the basic brush, it just looks like this. It's pretty simple. There's not really much to it and um, all of my other brushes are just based off of this one so I'll go ahead and delete this one I just wanted to show how you make one and yes and then I named all my brushes after my characters because I'm lame but hopefully it won't be too confusing so the first one I use is Xavier he um, I use him for pretty much everything like I use him for putting down the basic shades uh, like blocking out stuff and also painting sometimes and I don't change his settings at all and then for Felix I recently started using him for painting he used to be the same as Xavier little like I kept switching between them and I didn't know their exact same brush and now I'm, I was really angry so I decided to change Felix and now he's a painting brush and I'll go back and explain to him more because I use him all the time and then March he He's more for like weird textures, like I use this especially for hair, but it's like it blends like that. And the reason it has those frayed edges, it's it's on middle flat and I have it at 60. So <coughs> this is like, it's kind of similar to an acrylic blush, I guess. And I use it for, I don't use it that much. I used to use it a lot more than I do now, but I will show an example of when I would use it. Let me see. Okay. You guys saw this one. I recently did a speed paint of it. Go watch it if you didn't because I spent time on it. But I would use March. Like see here I used it on his hair and I just went through like that and then I blended it back up. That's what I use March for. And I don't really change those settings that much. And then Avery, he's actually a binary tool and I just use him for sketching. Like, I used him for sketching for a while on a couple of sketch pages that I did. And the reason I did that was just, it kind of felt a little bit like an inking pen, I guess. I don't really know how to explain it. But it was fun to do. Like, I just filled up a whole page with uh, binary doodles. And they're easy to go back and ink. That's so if you ever want to try something new, try using the binary tool. And I just have it really small. And then for Lucas, this is just the regular blur tool. All the blending settings are all the way up. So when you do something like this and you want to blend two colors together, you just go get your blur, blur tool and you just blur it. I never have changed the settings on that ever. Except for density. Like sometimes I want it to blend more and less. So you just change the density if you want it to blend less as I will show here. Okay. So these two, this is what it looks like when you blend it all the way. This is what at 50. See it does it a lot less. So if you're going for a no more subtle blurring, you would change the density of that. But I don't change it that much. And then Ariella, she's actually my writing tool. And I just changed all her settings to like there's no edge hardness. The min size is at 100% and that makes it where it doesn't like if it was at 0%, see, it like frays like that, and I don't want it to do that because I want to use it for writing. So when I put it at min percent, I also change the stab stabilizer to 0 so I can write easier. Because when it's not at 0, like say it's at 10, it's a lot harder to control for me. So that's something to do if you want to like, make a writing tool. See the difference? That's at 0 and it does those weird things when you're at 10. So that's why I changed that. And then 
Um, going back to Felix, I'm going to make a box. And let's try two different colors just to get some variety. Use my favorite color, this weird... Well, that's not my favorite color, but oh well. Um, what I use him for is to paint on stuff and see, like, I have the dilution and what dilution does. Okay, I'm going to have it at 0%. This is with no dilution. This is with 50 dilution. That's what I had it on before. Basically, what it does is it doesn't add as much uh, vibrancy to it, I guess. Like, there's not as much. Think of it as, like, you don't have as much paint on your brush or something, and it blends more with the color below it. So if I have it at 100%, like, you can't even see it at all. So it's, like, watered down. And that's what I change the most, actually, when I'm painting. Like, I never keep the dilution the same. It just depends on what I'm doing. So the, if I want it to blur more, or I want it to have more, uh, like, if I want it to have a more subtle change, I'll have a higher dilution. If I want it to have no dil change, I'll have a lower dilution. And that's why on Xavier, um he's perfectly smooth like there's no dilution when I add dilution to it it makes it uh, lighter so that's what dilution does it's very useful and I would use it a lot then blending what that is is um, okay I'll have it at zero and I'll have dilution at zero too so I can uh, what's a good color okay these two I'll have my blending at 50 that's they blend the two colors together when it's nothing it just goes right over it when it's uh, like perfect it like it totally blends with the other one so uh, and I use that in uh, side to side with uh, dilution and then persistence I don't really change it I'm not exactly sure what it does probably does something pretty cool I don't know I don't worry about it but yeah then the other tools below this I don't know what they do they haven't really changed much of anything for me but I would definitely when you're painting change these settings. These are the ones that make your life. I'll try it down here too. See? And it just, it's kind of like paint. Okay. And then one more thing is I wanted to show is texture. And I'll just show a simple cloud type thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, there we go. And I'll do... If you want it to blend with that layer, you just keep it on the same layer and you do all this stuff. I'm being lazy, so I'm not going to like make it all perfect and stuff. But then I make a layer above it. And okay, I want a cloud, but sure, that kind of looks like a cloud, but it's kind of boring. What I do when I do clouds is I change the texture to spread. And I don't have it that high. And th what that does, it just gives it a fun texture. And when I start out, I have the blending, I mean the dilution in the middle but then when I want it to be body like at the top I make it less di diluted and then I just play around with it a lot I don't there's my bush settings are not set to anything specific okay anyway as I was saying I got interrupted uh I just want you guys to try playing with your bush settings a lot and don't be afraid to change them because when I was first starting out I would take someone's settings and I would not change them at all. I was so terrified that if I changed it, it would make them bad and they would not work. But then I learned, like, when I learned that you could change these options and it made it so much easier to do certain things, like hair and stuff, it totally changed my world. So just make sure you try different settings and just try different stuff. Like, even now, I don't really use other people's settings unless it's just something I've never seen before. But really and truly, they all basically do the same thing, just in very subtle, different ways. And try all the different um, textures and stuff as well, because you never know. You might find something really amazing, like this middle flat brush. Like, I would have never tried that if I hadn't saw someone else was doing that. But it's really, it's cool. So, I hope you learned something. If you didn't, sorry. I don't, I don't know. You'd have to. I, I guess this is more of a beginner tutorial. I'm going to be making uh, paint tool side walkthrough tutorials, and hopefully those help as well. So subscribe if you want to see those, and like if you liked it. Thank you so much, and bye-bye.